So here we are back on woodland. First time I've been on since about June. I tend to avoid it while it's busy in the summer. There's only a couple more bivvies on here today. I don't think anything was caught last night. I think there was one out yesterday. Funny feeling it's going to be hard. The water's very clear. The rods are in. It's my rods. Margot's joining me later on. We're actually on the point here. I've got peg two and three. My rod's down there, I'm in peg two. Margot's joining me later, she's going in on peg three. Everything's set up, baby set up, day shelter set up, because we're going to do a cooking video later. All we need now is some fish. It's lovely to be here, it feels like coming home. I love this lake, and uh, there's some really, really nice fish in here to go at. It's probably the hardest lake I fish. Um, <laughs> it makes you tear your hair, hair out sometimes. It could never be described as easy. One run will be a bonus. I'm here for 24 hours. Bring on them carps. Everything's set up now. Elfie's led in the bivvy doorway, enjoying the sunshine. It's a really nice day actually, it's a bit blowy. It's not a bad old view, is it? I can't think of a better way to spend a weekend. One of my pet hates. Not a lover of bait boats. Especially ones fitted for fish finders. I suppose it gives them something to do when we're not catching anything. Hi there, we are at uh, Woodland Lake at Cokin Farm uh, today. Um, planning on cooking something a little bit different than we've done before today. We're going to cook some sea bass. Uh, so, sea is going to meet lake today. Um, we've got all the ingredients laid out in front of us, as you can see. Uh, we're going to use uh, new potatoes. We're going to use uh, the cooked beetroot that you buy. We're going to use watercress. That's going to be the base of our, it's like a, like a warm mini salad. Uh, we've got the lovely sea bass in here, we've got parsley, lemon, capers and sour cream. And uh, I'm going to knock this dish up before it, the sun sets and it gets too dark because the evenings are closing in a bit now, it's um, well into autumn. sea bass which as you can see I've scored which means putting lines in the skin you don't want to go deep into the actual flesh of the fish but you do just want to do that this just prevents when we put it in the hot oil the fish from curling up like a piece of bacon does the rind would obviously curl up and cause it to misshape so that has that effect on it so I'm just going to put this on the plate while I can cut up all the other ingredients now and um, Get the show on the okay, road. as ever, when we've been handling the fish, we don't want to cross-contaminate because I'm going to work with some salad items in a minute. So, spray on the anti-back spray onto the knife, preferably not my remote, and then clean it off. 
Sterilises the chopping board and removes any odours and flavours that remain on there. One of the easiest times to get food poisoning would be if you start cross-contaminating on the riverbank. So it only takes a few seconds, very sensible, sensible okay, move. Here I have watercress that I've, um, it's already washed. Um, you must make sure you wash watercress. There's little bugs that live on there which um, aren't good for your stomach. Uh, I've got the cooked beetroot just because it's simple. Now if I was doing this particular dish at home, I'd probably uh, be buying some baby beetroot and roasting it, but simplicity is called for. And uh, rather than carry mixing bowls, I'm gonna um, basically chuck everything into this bag and, and shake it around. So uh, this is what we're gonna do now. So the watercress is already in there. We've got our beetroot and I'm just gonna slice it. And into this, a bit later on, is the new potatoes we've already put on to cook. And then it will, um, if you just remove the top knobbly bits, you don't want that to eat. We will put some seasoning and some sour cream in the new potatoes and that will sit under the fish on the plate. It's full of uh, nutrients, this dish. You've got your fresh fish, which is so good for you, and then the watercress and the beetroot. Beetroot is such an underrated vegetable as well. It's really, really delicious, so versatile, and can be treated in so many different ways. I'm a bit of an advocate of this vegetable, really. There we go, so it's all in there now. Just a question of waiting for our potatoes to cook. Then at the last second, we're gonna add some salt and pepper, some sour cream, that'll go on the plate. So we're gonna pan fry the fish, jobs are good. And Potatoes are two parts cooked. The way we test is just shove a knife through. If it goes through really easily, then they're done. Really simple. Um, they're going to be about another five or ten minutes. Fish takes very little time to cook, so it will probably take longer to get the pan hot than it will to cook the fish. So we're going to light the gas and get our um, pan hot. Now, I'm going to use some butter, um, basically because of the flavour, and adds a really good colour to the fish. So put a knob of that in. And I've just cut a little bit off of the block at home. So that will go in the pan to melt. Uh, I'm also going to use, which is a product I'm using a lot now, for my cafe, for weddings and stuff. I've got Philbert's Gourmet Oils, which is a rapeseed oil. Um, really, really gorgeous saffron colour. Uh, nutty flavour. It says on the label here actually pea pod taste, which I think is probably quite accurate. Um, I'm not a fan of olive oil to be fair, that's just a personal thing, I don't like olives and olive oil just doesn't do it for me to be fair, so this for me is a really good alternative, I use it for weddings, for dressings and things, and um, the reason we're going to put that with the butter is because if you put the butter in the pan on its own it will burn, if we mix it with the oil this will prevent that happening, so we're just going to put some, look at the gorgeous colour of that, that is just beautiful, if I put some in the lid you'll be able to see it, can you see that? Absolutely stunning. Won't hurt to drizzle a little bit of that over the sea bass. Really good product, very healthy as well. Um, well worth trying and, and I'm such an advocate of Dorset products so this is pressed and uh, prepared in Dorset. That for me is um, a really good thing. We try and source as much as we can locally with the business. We're going to sort the sea bass. That forms a little bit of a barrier in the pan. And then we're going to put some pepper on. Now of course at the cafe I've always got the grinder going but it's not so practical when we're by the lake. So my oil's starting to get hot. Once that um, butter has uh, melted we're in business. It's going to be really simple. We're going to cook the fish skin side down. It will cook right through. We're going to chop some parsley, chuck on some capers, squeeze some lemon juice over. That's it. That's all we need to do with that dish. Really, really simple. Fish really needs to be treated simply. Don't overcomplicate it. Don't overcook it. You know, at the end of the day, you could eat it raw as long as it's fresh, which this is. Okay, pan's hot. You can see the smoke coming off. Got that on. We're going to put the fish on, skin side down. Hold it down for a second because the impact of the heat just pushes it up. While it's in the pan, whoops, 
while it's in the pan we can just season the other side of it now probably don't need any more pepper I'm also going to season, do you remember this we prepared earlier got the beetroot and watercress, I'm going to season that as well a little bit of pepper so in a minute we'll shake the whole pan around with the potatoes or even the bag Okay, while the fish is cooking, I'm just going to rip off a little bit of parsley and we're just going to chop it. So that's going to go on the sea bass. Parsley goes really beautifully with fish. Not only that, nutrient wise it's really good for you again. So all these things that are coming together, they're all making up your balanced daily diet. We've got our vegetables in here, the iron in the watercress. We've got the potatoes which are your carbs and then obviously your meat or your fish. It's all happening. No reason to be unhealthy by the lake, really. This is a really quick dish to prepare. The smell from the fish now is just coming through. Really, really delicious. See, Alfie thinks so as well. There we go. I would be using my big knives at the cafe and get it much finer, but this is a relax, it's the weekend, chill out mode. Okay, as you can see this fish has turned colour, lovely golden skin underneath, which will be just superb. Slight pinkness here. Was that a fish? That was a fish. <laughs> that was a big fish just jumped, did you hear that? There's hope yet. We've just got a little bit of pinkness here now, which tells me that in a minute or two, and when we touch the flesh, I can feel it just wants to flake, which is exactly the place I want it to be. Perfectly cooked fish. So what I'm going to do is our potatoes are now done. I'm going to strain those off, and then we're going to add them to my bag, my mix everything in bag, and then we're going to finish this whole thing off and plate it up. It's going to look absolutely awesome. The colours are going to be incredible. So we're just going to turn this gas off, as ever, because we're outside, we don't carry colanders. We'll just strain the vegetables off. That's that job done. Now, to finish this dish, I'll just show you the skin underneath that, which is so exciting. Look at the back of that sea bass skin. That's going to be absolutely delicious. So what we're going to do now, we've got the capers here. Now capers, in their own right, and I just gave one to Steve to try. <laughs> he didn't handle it very well. It's disgusting. <laughs> They're in salted water, but when you put them with that fish and they go warm with the parsley and the lemon juice, they'll be absolutely awesome. The smaller they are, the better they are. So just sprinkle some over. I'm determined that he's going to like these capers. Okay, that's that. Next, we'll put on our parsley. Again, this is all adding flavour to the dish. I've cut way too much up. You can chuck some of that in there in a minute so as not to waste it. Next, got the lemon. Now, if it's at home, I'd also be putting some lemon zest on there. We're not going to do that because I don't have a grater here. But I am going to cut it in half. And now I'm just going to, as with any piece of fish, it always has lemon with it. Just going to loosen the flesh because it's a really tight lemon and then squeeze it and again this is just imparting absolute superb flavour onto the fish this is going to be so delicious I can't tell you and then the other half again I need to break the flesh up because it's a really tight lemon here we go Normally if you're doing it in the kitchen you get a fork and you kind of twist it if you don't have a juicer. But we've got plastic forks and I think I may just break them if I do that. Okay, there we go. Just going to dry my hands. I'm going to add the potatoes now to the salad. This is where it all comes together at once now. Hopefully the plastic will hold up the heat of the potatoes. I'm going to break it, shake it around. Never done this before, may not work. Got to be um, practical by the lake. Okay, the potatoes and everything are mixed. Look. I've got the 
sour cream here. Just going to put some of that in. The heat of the potatoes will warm, warm this whole thing up now. So I'm going to shake it around. I'm going to turn my fish off now because I can smell that that's done. That's all really mixed now. So all we're going to do now is plate it up. Plates are ready, cutlery's ready, wine's ready. Just a question of serving this whole thing up now. As you can see, we've got our made in the bag salad. Here we go, look at that. That is just going to be so delicious. Just going to find some beetroot there. I'm loving this. This is a recipe I dreamt up last night. Wanted something really nice to do with sea bass. Steve on our own. We're on our own this weekend. Um, really adult dish, really. All this lovely watercress. So wholesome, so healthy. As you can see, the sour cream has turned a little pastely shade of pink. It's just awesome. Healthy is liking the look of it. Right, that's that done. Next we'll get our sea bass, I'll turn that off. We've got the parsley and everything over it. What we're going to do is just flip that over. Look at that skin. That's from the olive, the olive oil, I've already spoken about olive oil. That's from the rapeseed oil on the butter. Look at it, just crispy. And then we're going to cross it over. Look at that. Who says you have to have rubbish by the lake? You can eat the wholesomest meal. There we go. That is sea bass with beetroot and watercress by cooking and carping. So how you like in the capers? They're really nice now they're cooked. <laughs> See? I told him. I knew. This is stunning. Well, here we are. We're all set up. Night's drawing in. The lights are all on. All we need now is the scar common. Please. That big. That big. Monster. Well, dark's coming. Let's hope for some fish in the night. All set up. Between us, we've got six rods in the water. Let's have a fish from Woodland. Sometimes people ask me what the attraction is of going carp fishing. Other than just the carp fishing itself, this is one of the big attractions. Start up a new day. Dawn breaking. On a carp lake. It's just a special place to be. I'm going fishing. I had nothing in the night. Did have a funny sort of five bleeper at one point and get up and have to redo the rod. A few single bleeps. There was a lot of fish crashing in the night. I don't think any been out. Got a few hours left today, so uh, we've still got a chance. Hi there, we're at... Uh... <laughs> Start again. <laughs> Where are we? We're at Woodland Lake at Coco Farm. Woodland Lake at Coco Farm. <laughs> 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 I'm going to be a tongue twister, isn't it?